thank you everyone for being here in this uh, in this panel and we will see cybersecurity 101 and privacy 101 basically we are trying to make a boring topic interesting so there's going to be a lot of memes some of them you might have seen them before but you know let's dive right into it so my name is Isaiah. i will be the host of this panel today and i'm joined with two awesome guests the first one is arty how are you how are you doing i'm doing fantastic how are you doing awesome i am Thank you for being here and taking the time to be on the panel. And then uh, we have Eric. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing, Eric? Doing well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So, Arty, you're a streamer, and you Correct. will be sharing uh, your, your thought on cybersecurity and privacy from a streaming point of view, like a, a content creator point of view. And Eric is more on the uh, software development side. He loves security as well. So, an undisclosed uh, security company as well. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you know what, let's, let's dive in. So security, safety online, uh, privacy, all these are like super terms that you, you might hear weekly, if not daily, especially in the last couple of weeks. And usually you have people that say, oh, security, oh, it's using a different password. Yes, that's, that's one part. But you have the privacy part as well. So we're going to see first security, as in cyber security, just because it's security online, you know, not losing the keys of your house. We don't really care of that for this panel. But, uh, and then we dive into privacy and we'll see how the two are actually linked into uh, impacting the other one. So um, I guess we can start with, uh, with security, like basically like how safe you are online. And I would love to, to start with you, Artie. Like what would be your top five tips on you know, being safe online? Not from the privacy point of view, but just security. So for me as a content creator, um, thank you. <laughs> Security is really important. Um, if you are a creator that you, you know that we encounter trolls a lot. If you've ever been in creator space, you've seen it for yourself. There are people that are out to try to get your information and compromise it. So something that's been really important to me has been deleting any information that I have online, um, white pages. You can go on there, you can remove your information from there. You can remove your family members' information. Um, one of the other things that is also really important is making sure that you're not stating the state you live in or the city you live in. Or your address directly. Huh? <laughs> your full address, don't, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't put your address out there. Um, for example, if you're doing a P.O. box, keep in mind that when you're doing a P.O. box, people are going to know what state you live in, and that's going to put you at higher risk. Um, so something you could do is just kind of limit who has access to that, have people reach out to you for that address first. Um, another thing that is also really important is just to keep in mind what you're posting online as far as like photos. I've seen where people have reverse image searched something and was able to find someone's private Instagram account that had their, their city, their state, their real name, and was able to access their information through that way. So those are just some things to keep in mind for my fellow content creators out there, as well as just everyday individuals. This is something that could put you at risk. So now do you freak out everyone? Uh, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're, gonna <do. laughs> we're gonna go a little bit deeper in each of these topics. That, that sounds like, oh, it's a matter of risk. Yes, everything is a matter of risk, okay? If you cross the street, it's a risk. If you go out, it's a risk. If you stay inside, that's a risk, right? Uh, we're just gonna demystify all that and, and look at the different one we have. Um, Eric, what would be your top five or top three uh, on the security before we dive into each of the topics? I think the biggest thing for me for security is looking at an overall, as an overall system rather than looking at individual accounts. One, you should never have one point of failure for, for your security. If someone gets your password, you know, that, that shouldn't give them access to anything else. If someone compromises your email address, you know, you can, there are ways to make it so they can't get access to any accounts that way either. So it's, it's looking at it as an overall big picture and what you can do to add multiple layers so there's never one thing someone can do, do that uh, compromises everything. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's dive into passwords. Uh, let, let's let's be clear. Your dog name is not a good password. Your birth date is not a good password, uh, as as you could see on some of the memes there. Anyway, or incorrect is not a good password, and password is not a good password as well. You know, wow, shocking. So that's something you hear every uh, every now and then. I guess is change your password, make password unique for every site, all stuff like that. But you know, let's, let's face it, human, we are lazy. 
right? If we can just make one everywhere, we will do it, okay? Uh, Eric, what would be your your take on, on password? Like, what would be the easiest way to solve that challenges? Well, the best way is probably using a password manager. Um, you know, I think that's that's the single tool you could use to make life easier. You know, you should never, you don't even have to know any of your passwords. They should be so long and complex that you wouldn't even have a chance of memorizing them. You should rely on a tool, like a computer, that is good at remembering things to remember all your passwords for you. Well, RT, I know you have a different uh, opinion on that, actually. <laughs> I have an old school approach to it. Um, I actually write down all my different passwords because I'm terrified of saving them anywhere online. I know people that save theirs in private Discord channels and have had their Discords hacked. So um, I write mine down. I don't keep it anywhere where anyone could access it. Um, and then I hide it in my house, and I'm not telling you where. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, the, the key element is you will always have to define a, a good choice between usability security, and the last one is privacy. We'll see it a little bit better. If you want something that is super useful and works great and you don't know where to start, password manager, that's gonna be the hands down, the single most efficient way to do it. You have to remember one password, the password manager one. All the other one, forget them. Change them, forget them, make, make characters in there that you don't even know where they are on the keyboard. That's actually the best way to do it. And I can actually, I can actually vouch for that. I converted my mom to use it. She's not tech savvy. She, she, when she's like on her cell phones, like, uh, sorry, mom, if you watch that, she, she can't understand English, so that should be fine. Uh, she's on the cell phones, like, I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't work. It's like, no, you click here, it works. And she's using a password manager now. And the key was transferring everything that she had before into whatever password manager you want to choose, and then make it painful for people that will try to use the password they remember. So what I did is I went there and I changed all of her password, all of them. So she could not actually remember any of them except the one for the password manager. And that was the single most efficient way of doing it, to transfer someone that is not tech savvy and want to start, I mean, she doesn't want it to start, I forced her to do it, that need to start on password management. Honestly, if you can do that with your family members, I mean, if you are parents, you can do that with your kids. If you are kids, you can do that with your parents. You know, you can choose which way you want to do it. Um, password manager, yeah, it's hands down first recommendation, and we'll repeat that over and over quite a, quite a lot during this talk, I guess. Um, one of the main challenge is always how easy it is to use. If it's not easy to use, people won't use it. As we say, human, we are lazy, okay? Uh, what would be your, um, for you, Arty, what is the, the thing that, that is the most painful for you every time you have to use a password? Um, probably, honestly, just having to remember what it is if I don't already have it saved somewhere. That's, that's the hardest part about passwords for me. It's just memorizing it. Okay, so once again, password manager, just remember what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, I guess, uh, you have your take on that? Well, you mentioned you know putting a lot of special characters in your password. So if you have a password that's 32 characters long and it has you know ampersands and apostrophes and curly brackets and whatnot, even if you can't remember, it takes a long time to type that, that in. And, you know I don't know if you, about you, but I don't want to type that in every single time I need to log into a website. So it's it's a convenience is just as much as it is security. And, and convenience is, is one of the key as well. So that's why we keep something that is easy to remember, easy to type, because we, I guess we're all the same. We type the password, it's not good. Type the password again, it's not good. Type it again and then it's fine. And, but you, you thought you type it the same time every time, but it's actually not the case. There's like a typo somewhere or, you know, or the caps lock is on. It's like, oh. And then you lock your account and then you have to do all the thing over again. Yeah. Again, use a password manager. I'm not paid by any password manager companies, okay? Just the full disclosure. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for password management, but I'm not paid or uh, affiliated with any of them. Uh, if you're watching this, <laughs> contact me. <laughs> uh, this is an example of the most common passwords that people use. If you see yours in there, congrats. You have crappy system. <laughs> Uh, the top one is from, I think, 20, 2016 or 2015, and the one at the bottom is from last year. Guess what? Nothing changed, okay? Uh, overall, one, two, three, four, five, six is a very, very, very bad password. 
password is a bad password as well. And these are just the easy one. And Eric, you talked about, uh, I'll put lowercase, uppercase, and sometimes you see that on the website as well. It's like, oh, you need to have special character in there. Okay, this is how fast it is for someone to crack your password without knowing anything about you. So we're not even in the privacy part. Simple password rules. Technically, anything that is not green sucks. Okay, um, sometimes you cannot make it super long. Sometimes you cannot put special characters depending on the website or the service. The key is you cannot even type it, so you use the password manager. I really need to get paid by a password management system. It's yeah. it's crazy now. And no, yeah, basically anything that is less than 10 characters and only numbers, forget it. It's like having nothing. Okay. Uh, and when you say it's better than nothing, just this, this one is actually not the case. Yeah. And uh, adding on to that, if, there, if you come up with a, on a website that doesn't even allow you to have passwords with special characters in more than 16 or, or anything like that, you should seriously consider not using that website because if they don't let you do that, you know, that's a, they obviously don't care about your security, so what other shortcuts are they taking and that, that kind of thing. So just take that in mind that not only can you do it, but should, you know, will they let you? And I love the cardboard guy. I don't know if you if you know this person, the meme. Uh, that guy is always at strikes and always with cardboard. I have nothing to do with whatever is going on. I really like this one. How am I supposed to remember whatever is the gibberish and some names? And this is actually a major problem. We were taught for years to do super difficult password, etc. So for example, the Troubadour A3 something. Okay, this is actually easy to guess for uh, an algorithm. Uh, what is not easy to guess for an algorithm is when you have a lot of characters. So the key is, if you want to use only letters and maybe a couple numbers, make it long. Make phrases. Make it long, change a couple things, but you don't have to remember something super crazy, which is the main reason why we don't use it, a good one. It's because we can't remember. It's like, oh, was that like a capital D, a, cap no, a small one? Can't remember it was like a, a C after a D or, or a nine. So rule of thumb, password manager, uh, these are some of the most common ones that exist, not paid by any of them, by the way, and uh, make it long. Right, make it long, and if you can make it complex and long and don't have to remember it, good job. That's actually the best option you have. And this is just about password. Uh, I guess uh, Eric, you can uh, you can chimp in that. Password can get you know leaked as well. So how does uh, what what is a leak actually for people? Well, as I mentioned before, you know there are companies that might not take your security as seriously as they should, so they don't encrypt your password when they store it or, um, you know, the database they store the password in, you know, might, they might not patch it correctly or, or um, follow the, the recommended best practices. So leaks are when uh, someone, a malicious actor, comes in and, and leaks the contents of those databases um, so they can either get your password in plain text or or uh, the hash plus the salt, depending on, on how good that company's security is. But basically, it, it's, it's just a collection of leaked credentials from, from uh, a certain website that gets compromised or which, whichever one it may be. Actually, on that, I have a, a demonstration. I, like for, there's a website called haveibeenpugne.com. Uh, if you have the, if you scan the QR, that's going to be sending you directly in there. It's, this is a safe one. We we checked and we we make sure it's good. It's actually by a security researcher. researcher. And that site is actually um, you enter your your email and it will tell you where you have been, your password has been leaked or your information has been leaked. And I will do. I don't know who owns bob at gmail.com. I'm very sorry if you own that email, <laughs> but you have been part of. 277 data breaches. That means there's 277 companies that have been broken where that person, either password or email address or special information have been actually made public. Not public for all of us, but public on some part of the internet. And that's hundreds and hundreds of them. There is some that happens daily. Most of them, we never know about them as well. Okay? so. I encourage you to check that, and if your email is in there and you use that password on anywhere else, change it everywhere. That's, that's sad, but that's the, the world we live in. 
I will not do it live with any of your email guys. Okay. Thank God, don't, please Appreciate don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what happened? You have a good password, you have um, a good practice of using password manager, and then you're part of a leak. What is, uh, what is the next step? Uh, what can we do to make it a little bit better in terms of security? Arty, what would be your recommendation? Um, the first thing that I would do is, okay, so definitely go in and change all your passwords everywhere, but also make sure you have two-factor authentication enabled, because even if someone's trying to log into something with your password, if you have two-factor on, they don't have that code that's getting sent to your phone. So do make sure you have it on. It has saved my, like a couple of my socials several times. I'm not joking. I'm gonna keep stressing it after this panel too. <laughs> Enable it now. <laughs> So two things, uh, good passwords, and then two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication for people that's like, like, what is that? That's when the service or the website or the application send you a text by SMS, for example, or you can have that through different application. Uh, actually, Eric, what would be your option? Do you like SMS or not actually for two-factor? Uh, I actually don't like uh, SMS-based uh, two-factor just because A, uh, introduces a, another single point of failure if someone were to walk into the AT&T store with a fake driver's license with your name on it, they could get access to, uh, to the SIM card uh, for your phone and then they could be in control of every single two-factor authentication you set up. So I actually I actually don't like that. I prefer uh, the kind uh, based off of like Google Authenticator or something like that where where you, you store the secret yourself in an app so it's only only you have the private key. It's um, no one can can um, you know steal it uh, unless they you know walked into your house or, or something like that. But it's it's a lot more secure than than getting it through SMS. So you have SMS as an option, which is easy to use. It's better than nothing. Um, the drawbacks are, uh, as Eric said, if someone managed to impersonate you, which we'll go see in the privacy part of that talk, and you'll see why it's actually linked. Uh, someone impersonate you and then access to your phone. If you lose your phone, change your phone. Actually, for example, I cannot use SMS myself because I'm traveling a lot in different countries where my phone is not working. So I cannot receive the SMS for authentication. So it was like a hard limitation for, for me. I use the same system as uh, as Eric, um, like an application on my phone, uh, there's like Microsoft uh, Authenticator, Google Authenticator, actually any big companies have them. And if you have a Google account, for example, and if you want to log in on, on, your, on, your, on your computer, sometimes it prompts you, hey, it, did you try to log from this location on your phone? Uh, this is actually something that is going to be more and more enforced for a lot of users, so you can already activate that. And in Google account or Microsoft account or any of the main accounts, you read settings, privacy, and this is where it is. Or settings, security, and this is where it is. It's called two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. I mean, two is when there's only two, password and something else. But you can do like an extra one if you want. But they are not really, um, not really easy to use. So like for example, like Eric, do you use any like hardware key, for example? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big uh, proponent of using YubiKeys for, for two-factor authentication. I think, think you have some slides for that coming up. Right? No, I don't have a slide about the, the key specifically, but it's a okay. physical device that you have on, with you that is gonna be an extra layer of authentication. It's good when you have to to do that for like very specific stuff. It's the, the main challenge and the drawback is it's not super useful. Like, I mean, you're in the, it's like, oh, I'm in the train. It's like, oh, I need to, I need to get my my uh, my passcode. Like, oh, I need to get the, the other key, and it's not super easy. But if your problem is to know before using a phone with authentication or using a hardware key, you're well past most of the people. So you know that's not really. No, that's good that you take care of it, but it's not really the challenge of today's talk, I would say. Yeah, and, and it is getting better too. YubiKey, uh, they sell NFC-based tokens now where you can just uh, tap your phone against them, or um, they even sell uh, like little USB-C dongles that you can barely even tell they're plugged in your phone. I have one on my, my computers because just because you can leave it plugged in, it doesn't stick out that far. Um, so, um, and they're only like 50 bucks. So and then if you get one of those, you know, you have, you have like I said, way better security than 99% of people out there. That's, that's true. And you know, uh, that's, that's sad to say, but I guess that most of you here have bad password and change that please that's very important and you online same thing as well like if you have so many times you hear like oh i got my social hacked right <laughs> or i got my 
my, my thing hacks. Like, yeah, but no, you use doggy name one, two, three uh, exclamation mark. So of course, you know, that's gonna happen, right? And I, I want to talk about family. How do you get on board your family? Like, is that something that you have done with your family or your friend on, and discussing about how you did password? Like for example, RT, what's, do you talk about that on stream? Um, I do, and I've talked about it with friends and family off stream with um, what I do. They could potentially be targets, so they have to be mindful of what they are posting if it's on anything that's public, as well as um, making sure that their socials are protected as well because someone hacks into my mom's Instagram account and can DM me and pretend to be her, and now they've got some personal information like that's a, a real thing that we have sat down and discussed as well as with i've got a 10 year old sister who sees what i do and goes i want to do that so it's been a big conversation at home and something that we've all had to keep in mind uh, eric what's your take on uh, on bringing the friends or the family in is that something you have discussion or you it's their problem <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll preach it to anyone who will listen. I mean, it's. I think it's the people you, that you care about. You know, I mean, they they deserve to, um, you know, have the same level of security you do. So, so I mean, it's uh, especially you know when um, having friends or family who, who have accounts get compromised, it could potentially affect you uh, in certain ways as well. So, um, having everyone around you be at the same level of security you are is, is definitely important. And keep in mind that any, and I will talk about password manager again, most of the most common password manager, they will have family plan as well. Okay, that's super easy to, to get everyone on board and it basically costs nothing because Alf, actually, Alf, actually the majority of them are free. So for the family usage, there's no reason to not use them. Um, Let's move a little bit on, on other topics as well. Um, what's your opinion on, actually not URT because you're not really directly using that, but uh, on using the browser to store your password rather than just a password manager? Um, so I don't know anyone that does that, but I personally, anything where someone could like log into it and get access to anything saved um, to access your other socials or even like your PayPal, your bank account, that terrifies me. <laughs> because you're not storing most of the password in, you're not storing them usually in the, in the browser. Just when you're logged in, you're fine and then... No, like them. so when it says, uh, do you want Google Chrome to save this password? Yeah, I don't do that. I don't even save it on my phone just in case my phone gets stolen. None of that. If someone like, I literally have a fear. Someone's going to break into my house. They're going to log on my computer. They're going to get access to all my stuff if I have it saved. I know it seems like really out there, but that's the mindset I live in every single day. Thanks, Dad, for bringing me up like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's something that's a real concern to me, especially if like you're someone that you have a lot of people over at your house all the time. Um, I'm sure we have some party animals in here. Someone comes over, jumps on the computer. Next thing you know, they're on size they shouldn't be, getting into things they shouldn't be, especially if you just have a lot of people coming in and out of your home. Yeah, totally, totally, uh, totally <laughs> following on that. Eric, what's your take on it? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of using the, the browser uh, in password manager as well. I, you know, I, I will say like, uh, like something you mentioned earlier, it's, it's better than nothing. You know, if, you, if, if it's the difference between you not using a password manager and, and you uh, using a password manager, I would say, you I mean, go for it. Um, but again, you know, I, I'm not, I don't like the single points of failure, so I, I don't like having, giving all my passwords to the same company that you know, does my email or, or my YouTube account or whatever. So um, that, that's why I don't, I don't do that. But um, again, if it, it's still better than nothing if it gets you to use more secure passwords. And you have no excuse because it always says if you want to save every time. So you have basically no excuse on this one for <laughs> if you haven't changed it. Uh, after this talk, like everyone like, oh, crap, I have to change all my cell phone, all my phone numbers and all my, uh, my password, what's going on? Don't freak out, just do it. It's as simple as that. Uh, Two-factor authentication as well. So if, you, uh, if your phone gets stolen or if your computer gets stolen, then people can't log in because they have the two-factor that we discussed a little bit earlier. And in terms of security, uh, what's your take on antivirus? Do you use one or you just don't care? My husband took care of that for me. <laughs> you will have to ask him later. <laughs> so we will take that as a yes, I expect. 
Um, I just use Windows Defender on my Windows computers. Um, Mac and Linux don't, I don't use a, um, antivirus, but uh, I'm also um, very, very untrusting about, um, you know, not downloading and opening random files. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the, the, the camp of, if you follow good internet hygiene and good practices for not opening attachments and stuff like that, you won't necessarily need one um, because at that point you're going to be in, over here anyway. Um, but um, you know, for for someone who um, like your grandparents or something that that might not have the same savvy, I, I, w I wouldn't would not be opposed to to having them use a, a third party antivirus tool. But um, Windows Defender, I think, is is good enough for 99.9% .9 of the cases. It's a very performant um, antivirus, and as as well, it's uh, is seamlessly integrated into Windows. So I'm I'm a big fan of it. And and, and the key is in the behavior, right? If you open any emails, you want a million dollar? Yes. Uh, like uh, we need your security number? Yes. No, you know, it's just be critical, right? It's it's always the thing, and you know. As the meme says, you can't hurt. It's a little little attachment. It doesn't you know, wait anything. You open it, and it's like, oh, it doesn't do anything, and then you close it. Well, actually, it did something, but you, you will never figure it out. Or when you figure it out, that's going to be way too late. Um, yeah, that's, you know, don't, I mean, especially, I mean, it's less of a problem now as, you know, Steam and uh, all the games uh, are actually that. But back in the days when people were doing a lot of piracy on games. There was a lot of virus and go things going on as well. So that was one of the vector. Uh, this is less of a problem because like Steam or whatever the like Epic Games is so easy to just get a game now. Like actually, uh, side story, how many games do you have that you never played? Um, uh, <laughs> next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's, that's the point. All right, so that's for the security. Of course, there's much more than that. Uh, we could go deeper. Actually, uh, we're actually uh, making fun yesterday with Eric that we could do a five-hour talk just on security, uh, but we will spare your time and not do that here. And we will have more paxes to continue on that topic if we need to. Uh, let's dive into the privacy. Uh, I guess, RT, you would be the best one here because you are the most uh, visible person out of us three. Uh, I used to be a content creator. Uh, I used to be front-facing camera. I'm not doing it anymore for a lot of reasons, especially for work. Uh, Eric is not. So <laughs> you you are actually the one that is mostly visible for uh, for that. So in terms of privacy, let's go let's go in there. So what do you want to start with? Oh gosh, um, you're the one with the questions there. What have you got for me? <laughs> um, what would be your top three mistakes? about privacy. Top three mistakes. Okay, I don't know how many of you all have done this, but I know when I was in high school, it was trendy to put the state you live in with like an emoji that reflects it. And like that was how you really bragged about where you live to your friends that lived out of state. So um, I almost had a stalker um, find out where I live just because of that. So that would be like my first thing is remove the state I live in from all my social media. Um, another mistake would be um, talking about like where I grew up. When I first started streaming, I was a lot more lax um, until I had someone find my high school information and that kind of scared me straight and was like, okay, I can't be so casual on here because random people can find where I have lived and therefore, find my mom and I have to protect my mom at all cost. Um, and then I think another mistake, oh goodness, as far as like privacy, it's not one that I have um, necessarily done, but it's something that almost happened, which was posting a photo of my dog and our phone number was on the dog tag and you could see it when you zoomed in. So. Thankfully, I caught it in time before posting it, but I know there's a lot of people out there who love their pets and we love to share photos. Believe me, we love to see the photos too, but keeping in mind that like the things that you post and upload photos of could you know, have your information in it or it could just be even like monuments showing like where you're at right now. And actually the right now part, I think it's gonna be it's interesting, especially as we are using more and more the stories more than we used to post, uh, especially like for the, I mean, you've been like, you celebrated four years on Twitch like recently, actually, mm -hmm. actually that was like this week. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, bravo. Thank you. <laughs> four weeks in there and like creating content. And 
obviously you're not behaving the same way you did four years ago when you started. You're not sharing the same thing, or you're sharing only part of them, and there's stuff that for sure are now a red line that you won't share, but you might have shared in the past as well. Mm -hmm. And how as a, as a content creator and someone that is doing live content, so where you have less time to review what you're gonna say or review what you wanna, you wanna show, how do you deal with that like, actually daily? I really put thought into what I'm saying before I say it. Um, so even like right now, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say next before I say it, but I've also kind of rehearsed it. Um, I've had like a lot of people like ask, where are you from? And I say, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in the country. I didn't grow up with video games like you did. And now look where it got me. So um, I'm really used to people bringing up things like that. And when they continue to push and push and push, um, just say, okay, I set that boundary. We're not gonna continue to push that boundary. If you want to keep pushing that boundary, you can see yourself out. Um, but just being mindful of anything I talk about, talking about like friends from school, um, not mentioning like last names, if I am gonna mention first names, um, not mentioning towns, just really like slowing down for a moment. I know we love our community. We love them so much. We wanna share everything with them, but sometimes we do have to stop and pace ourselves and think, is something I'm about to say going to put myself at risk? And, and that is something that is new in the behavioral uh, side is that you build the community. You, 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 you're in contact with them daily when you stream daily. And you, it's, you have to set that boundaries and it's not very clear. Like some people share a lot of information and they're fine with that. And some people share nothing and they actually have a fake name and a fake persona. And I mean, that's the two extreme, like no privacy at all and way too much that actually everything is fake which is fine as well. I mean, you know, it's entertainment, right? And so I guess that this, your, your, your four years of, of streaming and so on actually shaped you on how you want to do things. Do you think you're going to do in five years the exact same thing you do now or you, you will move your red line at some point? Um, I think I'll probably be where I'm at now with the things that I do keep private just because I do worry about like, We've all seen videos, or at least I hope we've all seen it so we know what it is, where someone gets swatted, so someone's watching a stream, they get the address, they call police, say there's a hostage situation, next thing you know, they're getting swatted on stream. Um, it's a real fear that a lot of us have to deal with. I've got two adorable dogs at home. My worst fear is like, SWAT's gonna come in, my dogs are gonna freak out, and they're gonna kill my dogs. Like, it's something that terrifies me to this day. If I dwell on it, I'm gonna cry, um, but I'm, I really don't see myself sharing anything more than what I have. Um, those who do know like what state I live in or my full name, those are people that like I've had the conversation of, hey, I know back in the day when you first came around, I was okay with it. Don't do it now. And even my mods, if someone comes in that knows me from high school and goes, oh, hey, I recognize you're from high school, my mods are watching and they're like, you better not say anything. <laughs> That's, that's actually a good part as well for the community part, especially I, if, you have, if you are parents and you have kids, they say, oh, they look up to streamers or they look up to content creators. That's something that we, when we started, did not have. So we did not have this, this mindset or this, this view on how to, could, it, could this be. And I'm the first one culprit. Like I shared a ton of private information when I started using Facebook. I won't say how long ago, that was way too long. And <laughs> And we all made mistakes, but the good part is we can still erase some of them, okay? Uh, and you know that's, that's that's something you do, right? You clean uh, when you figured out you had uh, some challenges. You cleaned up your yeah. Your social, right? Went back, cleared up old social medias. I even went back and deleted my LinkedIn completely, which was a process. Thank you, LinkedIn. Um, but I cleaned that up because there are situations where people will try to call your old place of work and pretend to be a new employer to get information on you. Um, I've had it happen to coworkers, but it's a very real thing to keep in mind to think about, okay, when I was younger, what was I doing that probably is gonna put me at risk now, go back and remove it. Um, and just to kind of pivot off that a little bit, that's something we gotta think, like keep in mind for those of us who have children um, I am an 18 plus community and we always know when there's a kid in our community because they will say, I'm in high school, I'm this years old, I have this exam, like they're so quick to share their information because they're so trusting and don't understand. So for the parents out there, just make sure you have this conversation with your kids. It's super, super important. 
So you have that from, from stream, and we'll, we'll dive into that uh, in a minute. Eric, uh, do, you, do you clean up your social? Like, do you have rules for that, or you just try to not post anything? I think I do a little bit of, of both. You know, I, I said the concept of internet hygiene before. You know, it's it's the same as your normal hygiene. You know, you after a while you have to clean things up, and so um, I I tend to clean up stuff that's super old, that stuff that I, I at least don't, don't didn't even remember. Um, and so I, uh, but what I actively post, I think, is a kind of a, a good balance of. Um, of you know sharing some information, but not too much. So I, I think it, it really depends on who, who you are and you know who you you're trying to be. Um, so for me personally, I, I I think I'm okay with with some information, but I, you know I don't make everything public. So it's 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 all about striking the balance uh, that works for you, and then using the, the tools that are available to you to to help maintain that level of privacy and security. And that, that might sound alarming for some of you, especially if you're watching online, say like you're trying to figure out which, you, you tried the, the leak website earlier, like I've been putting and you figure out you're like in 20 of them and you're freaking out. It, just do it. No, it, you don't have to do it by the seconds, but you know, tonight, you know, make, make a statement that you're gonna do uh, some of that, like remove some of your stuff. It's super easy. Like for example, Facebook, you go to settings privacy, set to on, like uh, change your default privacy and then you can say, Everything that you posted before is now that privacy setting. So anything that was public is now just only you or just friends. That's that's like four clicks, right? It costs nothing to do. And it might save you because you can't remember what you posted like 12 years ago when it first started, right? But we don't use it the same, like we don't use social media the same way as well that we were using five, 10 years ago. And you know, it's the, the, <laughs> there's a saying that say, the, base, the best way to keep data private is that this data doesn't exist online that's actually true, right? If you if you can avoid posting something, it's easier to not have it in the public space rather than posting something and figuring out where you can delete that, delete that later on. And that brings me to temporary content. Uh, stories is a, is, a, is a large thing. That's something we use a lot. Uh, it's not because it disappeared in 24 hours that it disappeared forever. If someone was watching it, it's super easy to save it. It's super easy to take a screenshot out of it. It's super easy to figure things out. So I'm actually, I have a mixed feeling about stories. I think they are a good way to communicate, but they give a false sense of security and privacy because it's not because it disappeared in 24 hours that no one sees it. People saw it. It's just not there anymore for them to search, to search through it. Um, and actually, as a RT, as a streamer, do you use stories a lot and how do you use them? I use stories a lot, especially with Instagram. Um, I have to kind of know what's gonna help the Instagram algorithm so I can grow my following there. And I've noticed that posting the stories along with a series of other things um, does help me reach more people. So stories is something I have to do. However, if I'm posting the stories, it's gonna be the same photo I'm posting on my regular Instagram, which is taken in like the privacy of my room. I don't even take photos in the rest of my house because I'm worried that someone will reverse image search it and find like the listing for my house back when it was up for rent. Um, so I only do photos in my one room where it's completely different. Um, and then anything else I post on stories, it's just, it's just a funny meme. And, and the key, especially for, for youngster, it's not because you share more privacy, like more things private, that you're gonna be more popular. That's that's a disbelief. That was that was the thing at first with Facebook. Like, oh, I wanna get as many friends as I can. Like, yeah, that's actually it creates problems later down the road. Or I always posted like I was the culprit when I almost did that like a like, long time ago. It's like I like ah oh, yeah, going to this party, going to that, like going on vacations. Like yeah, if people know where you live, going on vacation, cool. There's no one in the house. Let's rob it. No, that's that's an extreme case, but that's actually happened. If you get robbed and you're on vacation, one of the first questions the police will ask you is like, did you post that on social media? And you say yes, too bad for you, because you gave everyone, it's, you almost you gave the key, right? I mean, you don't give the key physically, but it's almost like you have the location and no one is there. Easy, right? So that's something to, to be mindful. Um, something that we don't think when we are younger is how this can impact us later down the road. You talked a little bit about that. Um, how, it, what is something that impacted you that you posted, for example, like 10 years ago? 
And 10 years ago, we were not posting as much as we're posting today, by the way. We're not creating as many content back in the days. It is something that, except your state, for example, which was a good example, you do have something else that you say, like, I should have never done that. Um, I can't think of another example other than um, I used to have, like, my personal post um, on the same Instagram that I use now for my content. Um, and I would have people go back and screenshot photos of when I was 16, 17 years old and repost them online um, and make very demeaning comments towards me. So I had to go back and take all those photos down because that at the time I was an underage child. So it was just very inappropriate. So going back, like especially if, if you're a creator and you're reusing old social media accounts, go back and delete that old stuff because people are gonna go back and use it and in awful, terrible ways. And it doesn't bring added value as well. Eric? I was gonna say, how many people here still have their old MySpace account active? <laughs> Couple of ones, couple of ones. Uh, actually, Eric, about um, stuff that you do not simply appear in search results. Um, when you look for a job or change for a job, uh, do you usually Google yourself before? Yes, I, I, I would say I can. I practice SEO on myself, uh, as in I try to uh, kind of groom the results of what of what Googling me uh, would look like. Um, just so, because um, you know, the, uh, especially working for large tech companies, um, I think that there is a, you do need kind of a balance of, of not only what your technical skills are, but you can also potentially need like a good online appearance. You know, you're not, when you Google yourself, you know, there's, n there's not a bunch of stuff coming up that you don't want your potential employer to see. So I think that's, that's definitely something to be mindful as well. So um, I, I do take that very seriously. You don't want pictures from the party 10 years ago where you were completely drunk, you know, yeah. if you're old enough to do it. And then this popping out in the first page of Google search image, like, oh, I'm about to hire that person. It's like, nope. All right, next one. So keep in mind, you, you are aware about what you do today with what shows up today, the stuff that you did before that will still show up today. And for that, there's a couple of ways you can always request uh, the right to be forgotten. I know in the US it's a little bit tricky to, uh, to, to have it applied, but technically, I'm a European citizen. You know, that's you know, something I can always claim GDPR and I can always claim a lot of laws for it. Uh, but usually make sure that stuff that you don't want to be seen online, remove them. And if you don't want them, don't post them online in the first place. Okay. And, and Eric, you're right. Um, what you're saying that you have to do SEO and Google search on yourself. Uh, this is actually a personal branding exercise more than just a, a safety and, and privacy one. Um, actually, that's something you should do if you ever look for a job, the first thing you should do is figure out what Google says about you because that's the first thing people will say. You can have the, you, you might have the best LinkedIn profile ever that goes, everything is nice. And the first time the, the, the researcher or um, the person doing the interview will look for you on Google and they will find that you are a hardcore partier and then you have, you had a mugshot back from a couple of years ago. Like all that is not good for you. That's gonna hamper your, your opportunities to get, you know, Job, better job, or good job, whatever. And, and it's not just jobs; it's, it's also the government as well. If you if you try to apply for a trusted travel program like Global Entry or Nexus, or um, you know you're applying for citizenship, or you need to get a security clearance for a job, all that stuff comes up then as well. In terms of privacy, uh, let's talk about advertisements. Uh, so, okay, we're not gonna bash. Uh, all the privacy problems that exist in the world today, we will need two days, like the whole packs, actually just to talk about that. Uh, what's your position or like, do you freak out when you see ads? Or actually, do you see ads at all? Yeah, I see ads and everyone gets on to me like, why don't you have an ad blocker already? I'm like, I'm sorry, I just haven't gotten around anything like that, come on. Um, no, it doesn't really like stress me out because I know it's like using cookies. It's just things that I've looked up on Amazon. So it's just showing me cardigans. And sometimes it shows me something I do like, but then sometimes it shows me sketchy advertisements for websites where I'm like, hmm, that's bait. 
Then did you have this freaking out? Like you talk about something with someone and then it shows up in an ad like the no, day after? No, I tried that though. Me and a friend tried that where you like talk to your phone to see if it's listening and then you start getting advertisements and we didn't have it happen. We tried. We were really testing it, but nothing happened. Happens a couple of times, but usually it's not just what you say, it's what you search and the behavior mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so actually that's that's a fact. I think, I think we can talk about that as usually companies that are tar targeting you with advertisements, they know more than you know about yourself. Because there's a lot of stuff that we do online, that we search, that we, we do it normally because it's us. But we don't, we're not conscious that we're doing that. So yeah, ads company, they have so many data about every, not every one of us as say, but they can target specific groups. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sometimes freaky. Uh, Eric, I guess you don't see ads, right? Well, I think it depends. It, um, you know, especially with with uh, content creators I watch, uh, you know, I make sure that I don't use ad block with like Twitch or YouTube or stuff like that because I want those people to get I enjoy to get the revenue. It's their jobs. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, pretty much everywhere else um, where it, it doesn't involve giving someone I like money, uh, I will use ad, ad block. Yes. And there's a couple of things you can do. Um, usually, the the main challenge, I mean, especially for the past for the past couple year, like two years now, you always see like, hey, this website use cookies, or hey, can you approve this? And you always click accept all because it's actually the fastest way. Uh, actually, don't just go and refuse all. I know it's two clicks instead of one, um, but that is just to. To basically give less data, metadata about you when you go online. Uh, I know uh, if you, if some of you actually watched uh, last week tonight with John Oliver recently, uh, there was actually a full episode about uh, tracking online and ads. I actually recommend you to go see it. I cannot pr like push it here because it's like 22 minutes, but very good. Uh, and it's a very good, uh, good thing in there. Um, one thing as well is Google. When you search on, because pretty much everyone uses Google, if you search in there, they know what you search for. Right, it's it's not. They don't even have to to go sneaky around and know what you're doing. You tell them what you want. It's like, hey, I want to find I don't know, like a, a computer with lights. Like, okay, they know you want a computer with lights, and then the next two weeks you're gonna have ads about computer with lights. That's their business model. And just be mindful. You can erase your history uh, on Google. What you search, you can erase what you watched on YouTube as well. And um, you know that's you know very easy step to do. Uh, the other thing as well is you can use any uh, privacy-focused browser. Uh, for example, I know everyone uses Chrome because it's easy and it's convenient. Uh, there is other alternatives. Uh, Firefox is the most well-known one. Uh, Brave is one of the newcomer, DuckDuckGo as well. Uh, actually, DuckDuckGo, they do a uh, search engine as well. Brave is doing, but it's not, it's not yet there, it's still in beta. And basically, when you search something on DuckDuckGo, for example, they will not store that. So they will display the result, but they don't care what you search for. That's not their business model. And in terms of AdLock, there's AdLock and AdGuard. These are the two main ones. Uh, there's actually dozens of others. Uh, we can't just talk about everything here. And for the very, very uh, crazy ones, Tor, uh, if that's the first time you hear this name, just don't use it now. That's not, that's not what you're here for. There's other stuff as well. Um, there's actually a lot of things in privacy, like a lot of things from not, the, the first thing is don't post your personal information online. If someone asks you for your social number, just don't give them, especially not by email. Um, there's something, and I don't know if that's something you have used in the past, but for example, you receive a call and it says, oh, you have won a cruise in the Bahamas. Like, okay. Uh, usually the first thing you see that is like, nope. And then you, f you block the number, right? Because no one is offering you free stuff usually, right? It's, if it happens, good luck, because that's not true. The, that being said, when when you get stuff done, and, and especially it's always like, oh, I like by email, like phishing by email is very common. Like, oh, I, I, I want to have this, or, or let me help you on that. And then you give up a lot of private info. As we say, the best way to not have your private info being used, just don't give them. Right? For example, when I, when I need to open a bank account or I need to confirm something with my bank, I will call the number. I will not let them call me. If they call me, I cannot verify that's them. I will call the number that is the official number on the site, which is the official site. I will not let them call me. There's a lot, couple of things like that. Uh, actually, uh, side story on that. Uh, I pissed off the Canadian 
uh, border officer that were checking if you were actually doing your quarantine back in the early COVID, because they call you and they ask you if you're home, where you are, your address, when you flew in, and your name. I was like, I'm not giving you that. And the number you're calling me is actually not the number I can see on the website. I'm not answering any of that. So I was stuck in quarantine for 14 days, but no, at least, uh, <laughs> at least they, I could not verify that I was the right person. So be, be critical, like be mindful, be critical, especially when it's like, no, are you living in that? Like, yes, but no, if you ask me, it's because you already know, right? Especially fishing for information, confirming information that have been leaked as privacy is usually a problem. Um, when I talk a bit about uh, private communication, what do you usually use to communicate with, for example, families or, I mean, both of you and, and Eric? For personal family, like yeah. just people IRL, um, I just communicate with them directly through phone or a private Facebook. Other than that, um, that's it. I also just don't want them on my content creator stuff. So if they follow me on there, I block them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good one. Eric, what do you mostly use for communication with family, for example? Um, all of my family is on Signal, and I, I'm very, very fortunate that uh, they've all been able to adopt that technology because it uses, uh, oh, well, look at that, it uses end-to-end uh, -end encryption. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of my preferred messaging app of choice for, for personal stuff. So these are examples. So Signal, uh, actually, I will personally recommend this one. I actually use it. There's a couple of things I don't like about it. For example, it identifies you with your phone number. If you try to keep your phone number private, that's actually defeating the whole purpose. Uh, but with the family, that's actually something that is very similar to WhatsApp. It's just not owned by Facebook. Uh, WhatsApp is in there because technically it's end-to-end -end encrypted. But again, you know, that's part of a big company that is making revenues from ads. So be uh, careful with that. Uh, Wire and Threema are other options. Less uh, easy to use for people that, that are not in, the, um, uh, not in the tech industry, usually. And you know, there's couple of other good practices. I mean, we, we have extra time to, to discuss about uh, some of the, uh, of the key challenges. And you know, when you use someone else's computer, just log off. Just don't close the tab. Just log off, because then otherwise you have all your information that are still uh, logged in there. What would be your, your other topic of discussion that you would like to communicate with the audience after? Um, I don't think at this time I have anything else to put forward except for I don't know how many of y'all have seen it, but on Facebook, they have those trendy things where I ask questions and you answer them. And they're questions like, what city were you born in? What's your first pet's name? What's your mother's maiden name? If you see those, don't participate. Those are your security questions. And tell me, Ma, to stop posting it too. That is true. Like that harvesting is, is very bad on this one, <laughs> Eric. Well, I was going to say that, uh, another thing you layer, layer security you can add is when you if you use the password manager and you have security questions, there's no law that says you have to tell the truth on security questions. I make my security questions are as, as complex as my actual passwords are. I might not use any of the special characters, but you know what's my pet's name? Well, it's XL97 space Q whatever, uh, and it's. That way, that, that no one can use that as a social engineering uh, exploit against me. I, um, you know, it's it's kind of funny if you like call Comcast and be like, "Hey, I need to, yeah, I want to upgrade my account or whatever." And they're like, "Okay, what's your what's your first pet's name?" And you have to read that, that long string of characters. That's always kind of a, a fun thing. But um, I think that's that's definitely a, something you should be doing as well. Never never give the truthful answer to your security questions. I love that idea. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, that's that's what I do as well. I create fake names like what is the first group you attended random like you pick a like you pick a name of something that is not even like a group name it's like something totally unrelated so of course as, <laughs> as you said eric it's weird when you call the customer support very weird but it's it's useful like as, as you say no one is actually forcing you to have the real thing and if you're not forced to do it just don't do it you know that's because finding someone's location finding someone where you live before that's something you can find pseudo easily uh, through so especially through social media or following you or cross-referencing your friends or cross-referencing uh, people around you people that like you the first people that like your post when you were starting uh, on instagram for example this is actually a given when you start a new instagram account who are the first people family close friends very easy to figure out who they are on the first post and then 
figure out where they live, where they come from, whether they're the same school. That's, that's not something we think of because we did not post where how you went to school. It's just, it's easy to figure out. And actually most of the time it's not even a human doing it. It's actually a small algorithm. So don't freak out, just be mindful. Um, I guess talking about the friends and family, that's a good part. Uh, you say that you talk with your family, uh, RT, uh, from, from streaming, for example. Uh, are you pissed off at your friends that don't respect uh, when you actually tell them, like, please don't do that? Yeah, actually, um, we had someone come to my stream probably about a year ago and straight up doxed me, was like, hey, it's so-and-so, we went to so-and-so back in this year, and thankfully my mods deleted it very quickly. But I put out a statement on my private socials and uh, was like, you are putting me in danger and you're putting yourself in danger. And even my mom <laughs> pitched, my mom is very supportive of me being a streamer. She's like, dox my daughter and I will find you. <laughs> so she's very- I don't have a meme for that. <laughs> yeah, I think she's ac she was actually more upset about it than I was. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really frustrating because that's someone that you trust and I get it. Like they don't understand. They don't not, they don't know that, that things like, they don't know the dangers, um, but that's just why it's important that um, we have mods that pay attention to that and take care of that, and that we also tell them thank you because mods are amazing. <laughs> and especially if you have grandparents on social media, it's, it's our role, like our generation, it's our responsibility to educate them about that. Because what they're doing is like what we were doing 10 years ago on social media. And they might not have the full understanding because it's not as important in their life to, to have that. So. I hope that uh, you online and you here in, the, in, in this room, you, you could educate your friends, family, like, you no, know, basic stuff, like use a password manager, don't use the same password everywhere. Like, and, and the key, it's not because you're not doing something illegal that it have to be in the public space. Now, on the privacy side, it's, it's not because you have nothing to fear or nothing you know, wrong about you that it have to be public. You have the right to privacy and that's something that is super important start with what you post and then it continues with what you use uh, in the different tools. Um, I guess we will soon be closing up. Uh, Eric, uh, if you add, Ali, let's say three recommendation to give to someone, what would be your top three from your, your top of your head? Well, the password manager, two factor, and um, you know, just, just be skeptical. Um, I, th I think, a lot of, of, of uh, invasions of privacy um, that happen to kind of regular people like me who aren't uh, fancy content creators uh, are, uh, are, are, they're motivated by money rather than malice. And so it, it's, just, it's just bringing yourself up to the level where you're no longer that low hanging fruit. So I think, I think that's, it's really m more of a mindset than any individual tool. And like, like I said, you know, people, different people have different requirements and different uh, needs as far as what privacy are and just make sure that you are aware of what the tools are available to you and you use them in an effective manner uh, that, that give you the level of privacy and security that you desire. RT, what would be your top three recommendation? Go back through your socials, see what you've posted previously, scroll all the way down to the bottom, check the bio. There might be something hidden in like the info of an Instagram post that says something that's private information. I know I've gone back and thought I deleted everything and then a mod was like, hey, I went through and there's actually three photos where you talked about your high school and I was like, oh no. Um, so go back through your socials, scan everything down. Um, and then for my creator friends out there, don't be afraid to set boundaries if people are prying for information. It is perfectly okay to have those boundaries. It keeps you safe and it keeps your loved ones safe and it keeps the rest of your community safe. Um, and then my last piece of evidence is to just go online and see what information you can find about yourself and um, delete whatever you can that you don't want public. There's a way to do it. It might take some time, but definitely do it. It's definitely worth it. Well, I think that sums up pretty well uh, that, uh, that discussion. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. Thank you, everyone, online as well. We'll see you soon again. Thank you.